So with millions of Americans being at risk of being evicted in their homes, well, Nancy Pelosi is now trying to pass more relief for Americans. Cities can also start sending out their own financial relief money, also known as stimulus checks, as I like to say. Get ready for a fourth stimulus payment because I'm ready to see President Biden and the Democrats agree to a fourth stimulus payment. I believe they can get the job done before the end of the year, so let's see if they keep their word. Be out and things that were out may be revived and come back in. Specifically, I'm thinking of one of the things that you just mentioned, Medicare expansions. That's one of the key things for people like Senator Bernie Sanders. There had been some reticence on the, par on the part of Senator Joe Manchin on that. Nevertheless, President Biden last week said that he wanted to see something done on expended Medicare coverage for dental, hearing, and vision. Whether or not that looks like something like vouchers to cover dental care, all of that still seems to be negotiated. We're also seeing them figure out how they're supposed to pay for this. Last week, we heard a revived claim from Senator Kirsten Sinema that she did not want to see taxes on the wealthy and on corporations. With infant or pre-K pre age children need help with child care and home health care. These are not luxury items for them. They're essential for their ability to work and provide for their families. Millions of Americans suffer from the effects of climate change. Millions more will each year if we don't address that real threat. The programs being discussed will help restore that fundamental promise that if you work hard and you play by the rules, you can have a better life for your family. And we need to strengthen vital services like Medicare, relied on by millions for the long, for long term, and to make health care more affordable to seniors. I believe strengthening Medicare is very, very important, and we're working to get that done as well. So tackling these issues head on is a large challenge, but it's sure worth the effort. Doing the hard work to deliver on something big that will improve the lives of Americans in a very significant way is worth every ounce of, of, of effort. It's worth the sleepless nights. It's worth the long weekends. This is our job, and this is a moment. It may be a moment that doesn't come back again. Democratic lawmakers and White House officials on Friday we're considering devoting between $150 billion and $175 billion of the bill to housing. So while it would be a major cut from the $327 billion that originally proposed, it's up from the $100 billion level that was on the table earlier this week. The number ticked up in the last few days, after Maxine Waters vowed to fight any deep cuts to housing money, which she had envisioned would support public housing repairs and rental assistance. Nancy Pelosi had breakfast with President Biden on Friday, and pressed the White House to go along with additional housing funds. The White House is refusing to go above $150 billion for housing. The housing funding is just one of many areas of deep tension among Democrats, as they try to scale back what was once a $3.5 trillion bill. After moderate Democrats like Joe Manchin balked at a spending, Democrats are rushing to clinch a deal so they can put the legislation on the House floor this week. Biden, during a, house, during a White House meeting, with lawmakers discuss slashing the $327 billion in housing to $100 billion only. And according to Capitol Hill, the aides on both sides of the aisle, who cautioned that no numbers would be set in stone until the entire framework was finalized. And everybody, Upstate United has strongly supported the use, the use of available federal funds to help employers address rising costs associated with unemployment insurance. At the height of the crisis, nearly 2 million New Yorkers were unemployed. As a result, the state's unemployment insurance fund ran out of money, and New York ultimately borrowed $11.9 billion from the federal government to cover its unemployment insurance payments. In Seattle, House leaders detailed a $3.65 trillion spending package that would invest in housing, hospitals, and schools. And the long-awaited plan to spend federal relief dollars gives the legislature flexibility to spend more at a later date, depending on if and where Congress directs additional spending. Folks, I believe that President Biden can get the job done and send out more stimulus payments. Do you think the same? Tell me in the comments below. Congresswoman, there seems to be some pretty big issues still in the way here when it comes to addressing climate change, Medicare, Medicaid, the expansion of that. Is it possible to resolve all of those sticking points by the end of the week? 
I mean, I hope so. We're working hard. I know they're working hard um, to get there. And I think that, you know, again, if we can all get to agreement before the president leaves, that would be great. We can have a, an agreement in principle and we can finish voting the bills out next week. And is that enough for you, an agreement in principle to, to move forward on a vote on the bipartisan package? Well, we're calling for both, both votes on both bills at the same time. So hopefully by next week, we can get them both done. By next week, okay. I mean, hopefully sooner than that. You know, we're ready, we're ready. We've been ready. I mean, we've been ready for some time. But the progressive, so the progressive caucus in your position still hasn't changed. A framework is not enough to vote on the bipartisan package. What we've said consistently, and we've been really clear about this, is is we want to vote both bills. Now, you know, we're willing to, if there's agreement on the Senate moving forward, um, and the president has an, you know, an ironclad commitment from all 50 senators, we will vote both of them out of the House, mm -hmm. but we still want to vote both of them out of the House. Overall, how so are you feeling about the way this bill is shaping up with a lot of very short-term programs um, and, and not you know, a long horizon um, for, uh, for making these things really part of our society? Well, I don't know that that's true. I mean, we've got um, universal child care. For how many years? For, I think it's for six years right now. I mean, it's significant. Um, home and community-based care is actually longer than that. Um, we have the biggest investment in housing since the New Deal. Um, there's a lot of really good things in this bill, but we have to finish it, and we also have to vote it through. And we have to get the commitment from 50 senators that they're not going to undermine whatever we do in the House. And just to make it clear, you don't need a Senate vote for, I mean, it can, if it can pass the House first as long as you have that commitment, correct? You don't need a Senate vote first. Yeah, that's right. I mean, we're, we're saying, listen, let's try to get this all done and let's get it moving, but we do need both, both bills voted on in the House at the same time. As the Progressive Caucus have latched How important is it to you that the Medicare expansion and Medicaid expansion remain in the package? Well, you know how important it's been. I mean, it's important to us, but we're not drawing any red lines, but we're trying to get it done. I mean, we, we think both things are really important. We're in the midst of a health crisis, and we need to be doing significant pieces of work on health care um, for us to get through. So, let's see. You know, I mean, look, the thing is, we would have been done with a very different bill a month ago if we only needed 98% of us. But that's not the case. We need 100% of us. And um, we need two final, you know, we need two final votes in the Senate. That's really what it comes down to. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been my pleasure every day to be on the floor when Senator McConnell presents his view of this debate. I'm struck by several things. First, he seems to know in is inquisite detail the revenue package that is behind this reconciliation bill. That's news to me. Most of these elements are still being discussed even in our caucus and have not been agreed upon. He comes to the floor and makes